Hi, I'm Stuart Bull and I'm here with the fabulously talented and very, very cordial, nice, agreeable young man, Mr. <laughs> Alastair Green. How are you, man? Good to see you. I'm very, very, very well, thank you, sir. We've cool. spoken on the phone a couple of times mm -hmm. and we finally met to talk about, yeah. well, not only your own career and your own playing, but the fabulous Hughes and Kettner yeah. series amps. And you can see we have the mini stack of doom. That's right. <laughs> the Hughes and Kettner stack of doom. Affectionately uh, named it. So let's uh, let's talk a little bit about because you have a kind of a quite you're quite varied, uh, you know, in, in the things that you do. You have you you know you're a session guitar player. Mm -hmm. You've just been playing with the guy from the Toady Band. Can you remember? Oh, the, uh, Toad the Wet Sprocket. Yeah, Glenn yeah. Phelps did a little bit of session just, work just with been, him. Just been doing that. You have mm -hmm. your own blues band, yep. the Alistair Green band, yep. uh, which I know is doing great. You guys are just about to be signed, I believe. Well, to, uh, we're, yeah, we're working on a new record and getting ready to put it out and, uh, you know, knocking on wood here that, you know, some good things are, are look, you know, coming that way. So. Yeah. And I suppose, you know, it would be, uh, you know, it would be silly of me not to mention that you are the full-time resident guitar player for the Alan Parsons project. Yeah, the Alan Parsons uh, live project has been a great thing for me, for mm. sure. So that's been a lot of fun to be able to play with him. So Excellent, excellent. Now, just moving on now, I believe, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, you're using the 36-watt Tube Meister mm -hmm. head for the live shows. Yep. Well, actually, I've, I've used both the 18 oh, and have? the 36. Okay. Yeah, originally, it's, we started with the 18. Um, I mean, I can tell you the whole story if you Please want to hear do. the whole story. Our uh, um, guitar tech and our stage manager, uh, Dan Tracy, was telling me about these. I was having a lot of trouble getting uh, good sounds with some of the backline equipment we'd had, and he'd had one of these. And we were actually in Florida on tour, and we went by a guitar center and bought another one because he right. wanted to have two of them so he could run in stereo with his band. And so he let me use this for like about three or four dates, and wow. it just was it was amazing. It just changed the ball game for me. I could get a great sound, low volume. Um, you know, it's got this has got the clean, the the lead, and it's got, also got a boost. You know, mm. and so it was just really versatile right out of the gate, and I could get killer tones, really soft. So, after I had that experience, I got in touch with Hughes and Katner. I reached out to them, and they were, you know, right there going like, "Let us know if you want to use our stuff." And I told them we we're coming to Europe. Right. And so uh, for the tour we did in Europe earlier this year, I used uh, the thirty six. It was nice having you know two of them side by side. Mm. It looks very pretty with yes. the graphics. But I use a 36, and it's it's got a little, it's got reverb on the back, and then it's got you know three channels, you know, the independent, uh, clean and dirty sides here, and it's just been great, man. It just it sounds good in the in ears. Mm. Sounds really good in the in ears, and we run the direct out sometimes for the in ears and for the front of house. Right. And, uh, and and I can get such a good tone at a low volume that the front of house guy loves me now. Uh -oh. They used to hate me because you're you know, you're killing them, yeah. and you're going, hey man, I got to get a good sound, and the amp isn't going to sound good unless I turn it up. With these guys, it's at a low volume, sounds killer, and everybody's happy. You Excellent. Know? And dare I ask you what the difference is between the 18 and the 36 without you saying 18 watts? Well, you know, I think just the fact this has got. Um, a, adjustable gain and, and volume for the crunch and the lead right. whereas on the 18 uh, it's just I think it's got a preset lead boost so you just kind of set okay. your one channel there and then gotcha. it just kind of does the so boost. So they're still good they've both got great tones but great this, tones, is, this offers yeah. it just a little this bit is, more. This has got a little bit more flexibility like I said it's got reverb in the back yeah. um, a little bit more flexibility but uh, I, I mean I could gig with either one of these yeah. and, it'd be, and it'd be great. So uh, tell us about uh, recording because I know uh, I was talking with Alan about the uh, about the five watt, mm -hmm. um, you know, and I know that uh, with all of these amps that you can do this silent recording option. Mm -hmm. You've got an XLR out there, uh, the Red Box. I think they've had that technology for quite I think, some time. I believe now. you're right. Yeah, I think the Red Box has kind of been something that they've been famous for for yeah. a while. Yeah. And, and uh, have you done some recording using this? Uh, um, not with system? the not with, well, with the live record. Right. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm, I'd have to check. If, this, if the direct out went to uh, the recording engineer when we were doing the live record or not. Um, but as far as actually recording the amps, yeah, I mean, we've, this, the, we're, uh, it's, I think it's going to be like a full show, two, two CD live wow. record that Alan's putting out. And, uh, and it was one of these heads that's, that's on the record. So. Excellent. Okay, so let's uh, have a little listen to uh, what's right. going on well, here. You were playing some great stuff yeah, earlier Yeah, well, I'll just, I'll just do some here. Yeah. This is the, the clean channel. And this is the 36-watt um, we're listening so 36, to right 36, I think there's a little bit of reverb on the back and no effects. And uh, it's just really full all the way around. Those yes. Yeah. I really like 
like just how it sounds, very pristine. It's got a, a gain feature here, so you right. can kind of get this a little bit hairy. I tend to, with Alan, I want to keep it as pristine as I can. Yes, There's yes. songs that just need to be really clean. <laughs> And, um, and you you've know, got a separate master there, so you got a separate master. Yep, yeah, absolutely. And how do you find the headroom? I, you know, I think there's. I definitely think there's enough. And like I said, with with his band, it's very quiet. Right. It's a very quiet band, so I really don't have to like crank these up, which is again what everyone's thanking me for. <laughs> and, the, <laughs> yeah. and the crew, it's like, oh, good, we can. We're not airs aren't going to be ringing from the guitar. So, nice. but yeah, it's a really cool. I love the clean sound on this. So moving on to the crunch, I suppose yep. there, this is cool. You can kind of get anywhere in between what I refer to as like a you know a, a loud small tube amp. So when you dial the gain down, I mean this kind of almost sounds like what the clean channel would sound like, just cranked all the way up. So, and then you can kind of goose up the gain a little bit on this crunch channel. And you know that starts. To, that's yeah. kind of about the setting that I use. You know, because I can kind of back off on the guitar a little bit. Yeah. And then uh, you know, for solos with Alan, I'll hit the lead channel. I don't do a lot of rhythm stuff with the lead channel with him. There's a few parts that I do, um, but this channel. I mean, this is as good as any you know gainy channel on on any on any amp that I've heard. It's pretty. <laughs> I believe the one watt setting on this. Oh really? Yeah. So we're wow. this is the one watt setting, and it's you know, and we're going through a 112 Hughes and Kettner uh, cabinet, and it to me it sounds enormous. And you I can think... imagine that's mic'd and going through a PA. Yeah. I could I could go do a, a gig with this rig right here with the Alan Parsons Live Project at that volume. Wow. <laughs> and, and do, you, do you find any difference in the sound of the amplifier when you have it on the different power stages? Not, not a lot. I mean, you know, when you start moving more air, there are things that you perceive. But yeah. again, since we're using the in ears, you know, there's not that much difference on the settings. You know, I'll be paranoid. Is my guitar loud enough? But really, it's all up to the front of house guy. Yeah. And so I could play with it about this loud. You know, I usually use a 412, the Hughes and Kettner 412 cabinet. But I could play it about this loud, and you know, we play these, you know, large theater or a festival or something like that and it's just cranking out there and I'm not killing anyone yeah. in the first couple rows and you know and you can <laughs> join the gig from start to finish <laughs> exactly to yeah, halfway exactly. through and thinking to yourself oh my god you know like what am I I don't even know if anyone's playing with me right now right yeah As in yeah, the old days it could get a little bit like that yeah absolutely you know? no it's 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 brilliant how it sounds in the in-ears and I mean unless you've experienced how bad things can sound mm. in in-ear monitors I think a lot of musicians are afraid of in-ear monitors because sometimes it can just be really kind of a sterile environment. Yeah. And with this, you know, I can get it and you know to a tone where I'm not fighting and yeah. I'm not sitting there going, ah, oh, it doesn't sound good in the in-ears. Because sometimes with the some of the amps that I was getting and playing through, it would sound okay. I could get it sounding all right, but then we put in the in-ears and there'd just be some frequency that would just be killing us. Yeah. And so the monitor engineer had to kind of you know do you know some equalization surgery so that we could live with it in our in-ears. This thing just sounded great out of the right. gate. Everyone in the band. The first gig that this showed up, everyone in the band was like, "What are you playing through? Oh. Like, it sounds good on the in ears." And I'm yeah. like, "Oh, as this," and I'm 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 not even lying. I mean, that's the the honest to god that's truth. The truth is everyone in the band was like. That sounds good. like we want more guitar in our inners. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, yes. Come on. All right. I've finally done yeah, something. You'll be able, you'll be able yeah. to hear my solos instead of just tuning me out the whole gig. <laughs> <laughs> and are you, are, you, are you using a cabinet uh, live yep. as well? The Hughes and Kettner 412, um, you know, I was using that in, in, uh, in Germany and Holland mm. earlier this year, and it's just it's a, it's a great combo. You know, it sounds really good. And I'm, you know, I'm sure if I, if, if I couldn't get the cabinet or whatever, I'm sure this is going to sound good through any cab. Yeah. I mean, you know, so. Yeah. Are you just did the uh, the live record yeah and uh, so obviously and you know you didn't really know how the guitar recorded yeah until you you know yeah uh, I just and we just heard a little bit today earlier yeah. here in the studio and uh, it's it's great man yeah. it sounds really good in the mix and I think I think that's why the front of house guy is really happy to um, is it just sits in the mix better you know I mean the, the, the for this band especially there's so much going on there's keyboards right you know Alan's either playing acoustic guitar 
or uh, or keyboards. You know, there's another guy that plays a little bit of acoustic. Mm -hmm. you know, there's vocals, and so there's all these different frequencies, and this really sits really nicely in the mix mm -hmm. and cuts through everything. It doesn't really get. It's not getting washed out, and 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 you, they can bring up the solos and stuff like that without it getting harsh. Yeah, you know, there never seems to be any kind of mess in the sound of these things. It always no. seems to be a nice, clean, punchy. Yeah, you know, just good quality. You know, sound. Mm -hmm. So absolutely. So uh, what's next for you guys? I know you got some touring coming up. We're going, yeah, we're doing some, uh, we're going to Mexico this coming week. We're going to do a few shows in the States in June. Um, we're going back to Europe in July. Uh, we're going, I guess, Italy and Germany and Luxembourg right. in July. And uh, look, hopefully see the Hughes and Kettner guys out there and, and you know, for the German shows. Uh, later in the year, we're, I think Alan was talking about the CERN in Switzerland, the uh, Hydron Collider Atomic Nuclear Plant thing, thing yes. that makes your brain melt when you try to understand what it is. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're doing that, I think, in September. And uh, in between all that, my band's going to be busy. We're going to be uh, playing a few festivals later in the year. We're going to be working on you know, a new record and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm hoping to stay as busy as possible. Good. Excellent. <laughs> well, it looks like you've partnered up with some great guys. Yeah, uh, absolutely. You're obviously getting, uh, I heard some of the record guitars sounded fantastic and yeah. uh, you know obviously you're playing great and and sounding great for these things so it, uh, hopefully all the elements are coming yeah, together yeah absolutely to, uh, to, you know to, to to launch you even further than the success you've already had well which is, you know that's which, I which think most people will be very happy with <laughs> every every guitar player you know dreams of uh you know, continuing on in their career and not yeah. having to go back to flip burgers. So yeah, I, 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 absolutely. Which reminds me, I got to be out here in ten minutes. My shift starts. Your shift's about King. to start. That's right. Uh, but I, no. I'm hoping I'm going to. No, I mean, I, I that, you know, I mean, I, I started, you know, working. You know, I've been working day jobs forever and stuff. Mm. So I feel very fortunate to uh, to be doing, you know, music full time and get to obviously work with a guy like Alan is mm. is, is is been amazing. And tell us just quickly, how did that come about? Um, well, I'll try and do the condensed version. Um, he'd moved to the area, uh, Santa Barbara area, uh, I think, you know, over 10 years ago. And I was playing at the time, uh, well, with a few different bands, but one of them was a, a country rock act, and I was playing with them. And uh, the leader of that band was also a local DJ on the radio station. He'd met Alan at a function and was doing some overdubs for his mm. record up at Alan's home studio and he asked me to come and play on the record and that's where I met Alan ah. and so I played on my friend's record and about nine ten months later I got an email from Alan saying he was doing his new record but I'd like to play on it no 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 I'm gonna stay home so I went to play on yeah. Alan's uh, the last uh, studio record that he did called a valid path and I played on a couple songs and actually here's just a quick kind of funny story after I tracked my guitar parts for it I said well who are some of the other guitar players that played on this record yeah and he said, oh, some guy named David Gilmore. Yeah. And I was like, oh, really? Wow. Yeah. And so I'm glad you told me that after wow. I recorded my parts. So that was kind of a cool thing yeah. to be on the, the same record as, as David Gilmore. Yeah. Um, and then I you know, would, would, would hang out. I went to a couple of shows and sat in on mm. one of the songs I had recorded on the record. And then uh, three or four years ago, he started kind of revamping the band. And he asked me if I wanted to be in the new band. And I was just like, yeah, that sounds great. And, yeah. and you know, that's, again, part of that dream you have when you're a kid. You want to, you know, travel to see a little bit of the world and play your guitar. And, and get paid for and it. Get, yeah, give your wife the mortgage, you know. Yeah. And, and, and so it's, it's been marvelous. I've got to, you know, gone to South America a couple of times in Europe. And, and you know, gotten, uh, this live record's going to come out. And so I'm over the moon. It's been great. Excellent, excellent. And then I get to meet, you know, guys like Hughes and Kettner and some of the other companies that I started to work with. And it's been really cool. So do you think you'll have the Blues and Kettner signature amp? The Blues and Kettner. <laughs> Hey, I mean, come on. Hey, hey I, I Blues and that. Kettner. I said that. You heard me. You <laughs> right, heard me say so, that. So right. Stuart, Stuart owns the uh, copyright on the, Blues and the Kettner. Blues and Kettner, <laughs> which could be the Anna's the Green Blues and Kettner. There you go. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> could be something. Could yeah, be man. something cool. Yeah. Anyway, this is great to meet you, Alistair. Cool, man. Had a really you too. fun day with you today. All right. I wish you continued success. Thank you, my friend. With everything that you're doing, and uh, we'll be looking out for Alistair in the future with the Alan Parsons Live Project and the Alistair Green. Uh, is it Alistair Green Blues Band or just, just Alistair, Alistair Green Band? A Al Alistair Green Band. And do you have a website where we can check your stuff uh, it's out? It's uh, agsongs.com. agsongs.com. So go there, check it out, and look out for the record. Uh, it's going to be coming out later in the year, and uh, hopefully it's going to be a, a, a very cool record deal, and so uh, it's going to be something to look out for. Hi, Alistair. Man. Great to meet you again. Yeah, man. I'll talk to you soon. Awesome. Take care.